woman accidentally runs into her seven-year-old biological son she never knew existed. One day, a woman's life took an extraordinary turn when she ran into a seven-year-old boy. She had never been pregnant, but DNA tests proved she was the child's mother. When Connie Lannister was forced to use a wheelchair, her husband announced that he was leaving her because he didn't want to be with a disabled woman. Unfortunately for Connie, she had suffered a spinal cord injury after a terrible car accident, which rendered her infertile and confined her to a wheelchair. When her husband Josh discovered that she could not bear him a child, he did not hesitate to divorce her and leave. Before we continue, please take some time to like and share this video with your friends. It might brighten their day and inspire them to do good. Also keep watching because an important lesson awaits at the end of the video. Poor Connie was devastated and worried that after Josh, her co-workers would mock her and she'd lose her job as a nurse at Crossroads General Hospital in Atlanta, Georgia. But contrary to her expectations, her co-workers were very sympathetic to her and her boss, Dr. Edward, offered her shifts based on her availability. Seeing so many people who cared for her inspired Connie to break free from the depression. She'd been suffering since Josh left her and resumed her life. One day, Connie was about to leave the hospital after her shift when a seven-year-old boy was brought in. He was unconscious and drenched in blood when he was rushed to the operating room. When she inquired about his case with the receptionist, she discovered that he and his parents had been in a car accident. His name was Christopher, and his parents had died even before they could get to the hospital. Connie felt terrible for the poor boy and prayed for his recovery before leaving the hospital. When she arrived for work the next day, she learned that the boy had been saved and transferred to a general ward following an operation. That day, Connie was in charge of his room and she was asked to collect his blood samples for a blood test. When she went to his room for the sample, he was sitting quietly and staring out the window. So she approached him gently. Hi there, my name is Connie. Would you like to introduce yourself? The boy turned around immediately and gave her a bright smile. Hello, I'm Christopher, but you can call me Chris. Nice to meet you, Chris, Connie, said as she rolled her wheelchair over to his bedside. Now please lie down on the bed like a good boy. I need to take blood samples from you for a test. What? Please? No, Chris cried. I don't want to do that. It will hurt. Certainly not, Chris. I'll let you in on a little secret on what to do so. It won't hurt at all. Really? Yes. You just need to close your eyes and tell me a story. It'll be done before the story ends, and it won't even hurt. Really? Can I tell you my favorite story? Yes, Chris. You certainly can. Okay, Chris said, then closed his eyes and began narrating a story. Meanwhile, Connie quickly rolled up his sleeve to take his blood and noticed a birthmark on his hand. She took the blood sample quickly before Chris opened his eyes and left his room. But her mind couldn't stop thinking about the young boy. The birthmark was so similar to hers. When Chris' test results came in the following day, Connie learned that doctors suspected he had cancer. She was in charge of Chris Ward again that night, and when she entered his room, she noticed he was crying his heart out. She began to console the boy, but he continued to cry and asked for his parents. He just found out that his parents were no longer alive and he was missing them. When nothing else worked, she went to the hospital cafeteria to get some chocolates for him. Chris appeared calmer as he received them, and Connie later spoke to him about random topics that would take his mind off his parents. His favorite part of the conversation turned out to be Avengers, and he drifted off while talking to her. Sitting by his bedside that night, Connie noticed Chris resembled her a lot. He not only had her birthmark, but he also had the same green eyes, the habit of scrunching his nose while laughing, and was the spitting image of her younger self. However, she never had any kids and was never pregnant. She wondered if he was related to her in some way. Two days after, it turned out Chris didn't have cancer as his final reports were negative. In fact, he was making good progress and would be discharged soon. Meanwhile, Connie couldn't stop thinking of her possible connection to Chris. Then she recalled donating her eggs to close friends who couldn't have children 10 years ago. But her friend and her family moved to a different town soon after their daughter was born. 
she contacted the hospital where she donated her eggs and discovered from the medical archives that her eggs were used for another family. When she inquired further, she learned that the couple who had used her eggs were Chris' parents. Connie was delighted when she learned that. Really? Chris, he's my child. Her eyes welled up with tears as she flipped through the document pages obtained from the medical archives. She did, however, take a DNA test with Chris just to be sure, and the results confirmed she was his mother. Not wasting another minute, Connie decided to legally adopt the boy at that point, and the next morning, she was at the hospital's orphanage filing for Chris' adoption with the orphanage director. Later that day, when she went to meet Chris, she couldn't stop crying when she saw him. I'm so glad to see you, Chris, the woman said as she hugged the little boy. You won't be alone anymore. Chris was perplexed by her reaction. What happened? Why are you crying? That's because I'm here to take you home, Chris. Would you like to stay with me? Um, well, you were nice to me, and you gave me chocolates last time, so I don't mind. But there's something else I'd like to tell you, Chris, Connie said after a brief pause. I'm here to adopt you as my son, so you're going to be my new mom. Why? Chris asked curiously. That's because when an angel took your mother away, she told me that your mother didn't want you to be alone, so I decided to adopt you. Really? Chrissy's eyes widened. Yes, Chris. I'm going to have to leave now because I have some work to do, but I'll see you later. Chris didn't utter a word for a moment and just stared at Connie. Then he spoke up. Can I ask you something before you leave? He inquired, a little nervously. Yes, Chris, Connie replied, smiling. If you are my mom now, can I call you mom? Of course, you can, Chris. I would love that, Connie said, kissing the boy's forehead. Now go inside and play with your friends. I'll see you later. Bye. Bye, bye, Chris said and ran inside the orphanage to his room. Connie's life was completely transformed after adopting Chris, and she was grateful it happened. The little boy, who had lost his parents, had a loving home and a caring mother again, while a woman who couldn't have a child was blessed with a lovely boy. Years later, when Chris had grown up and entered university, he invited his teacher to dinner one evening. Professor Miller was single at the time, and he fell in love with both the dinner and Connie, who had prepared it for him. After that dinner, Professor Miller and Connie started seeing each other often and before they realized that they were in love. The two lovebirds decided to take the next step in their relationship and get married. They informed Chai's about it, and he was very supportive. Later that year, when Chris returned home for vacation, Professor Miller and Connie got married, and Chris now has a loving father as well. What can we learn from this story? When God takes something away, he always gives something else in its place and sometimes that something is more important. Connie lost her husband, Josh, but she gained Chris as a son and later Professor Miller as a husband, and she now has a loving family. Some accidents are indeed beautiful. Connie met Chris by chance one evening when he was brought to the hospital, but that incident gave an orphan a mother and a childless mother a loving son.